Hey guys, it's Emma here and in today's video we are going to be going through some locks. We uh, saved a boat from getting unpinned uh, and we topped up on gas at a marina. Um, but let's go! So Hillmolton Locks is actually sort of one of the busiest lock sections. Uh, there are two locks next to each other, so that does make it move a little faster, um, but it's still quite busy um, and it can sort of line up a bunch of boats. Uh, so luckily we managed to get in here pretty quickly. There was also sort of a volunteer, so they did some of the paddles for me, uh, which was handy. Um, I actually struggled with this paddle a little bit because I hadn't done locks in like a month, two months. So I kind of forgot how they work. Like, where where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? So that took a bit of figuring out, but I managed to sort of do it. Um, but yeah. So it's actually this really cute sort of book desk uh, where people sort of gave in uh, sort of DVDs and books. My mum actually took some uh, to read and there was also a really good cafe nearby uh, just sort of opposite the canal. Uh, the inside of the cafe was really cute. Sadly we obviously couldn't sit in there um, so we sat outside but I still got sort of a flake ice cream um, and there was also these really cute sort of uh, narrowboat figures.
so after the logs we moored up for the night uh, we found actually this really sort of nice spot uh, and then we stayed there a few days and then we moved off And then while we were cruising along, we actually saw this boat uh, being unpinned. I will explain uh, further in a second about how pins work and everything. Um, but we stopped. There was also this other boat going past. So they managed to push the boat back in for us with their boat nose. Um, and it was all good. They managed to get sort of pinned back in. And then we continued our cruise. So there are a few different type of pins uh, for boats. Uh, the first one where it's a bit more risky that your boat could possibly come out uh, is these kind of pins. You bang them into the ground and then you tie your rope through this little hoop uh, area. Um, and the problem with these is that if you do bang them into the ground uh, and the ground is soft, uh, the pin can just pull right out. You could do a really good knot on the pin and it wouldn't matter because it could still come out. Um, so that's what happened with the boat, uh, this, the pin just came out of the ground and the person seemed to have not been on the boat so that's why they kind of just floated out. Then there's the pins that we use most, most often, uh, which is the dab pins or the nappy pins. Uh, you tie your rope through this hoop and then you hook this at the bottom of an arm coat. Um, this is, you could still come out with this uh, if this maybe end is uh, bent a little bit, which some of our pins are, so we have come out a few times. And also if it's just the right angle, it will sort of come out. But it's much less risky to uh, tie your boat with these if you can with arm coat. And also arm coat, uh, you're not doing anything with the ground, uh, you're relying on metal, so nothing ever really goes wrong with that. So with the chains, it is impossible to come out with the chains. So what you do is you loop sort of the small uh, circle uh, into the bigger one, and then you can put the rope through that. Um, so the rope's impossible to get through that, uh, to get sort of come out the chain can't come out the rope the rope can't come out unless sort of it unties from sort of uh, the bow of your boat the only thing with these is that it can be kind of loose so uh you will sort of maybe move around a little bit more obviously there are ways you can fix that um but these are good we don't use these as much just because they're a little uh, annoying to sort of set up so we generally use the diaper pins um but yeah
So we actually needed gas uh, for our cooker, so we decided to go into this marina um, and grab some. And then while we were there, we also got some diesel, sort of just to top up. Uh, I don't think we really needed that much. Um, it was actually really nice at this marina. It was really windy, uh, so luckily when we were leaving, we didn't crash into any boats, uh, luckily. There was also some wide beams here, which is cool because we haven't really seen wide beams in a while. As you can see, there's sort of one there. But we topped up on gas and diesel and then left for our mooring for the night. And then here's our mooring. It was actually a really nice mooring. There was sort of a field opposite um, and it was really quiet. So we stayed there for a few days um, and yeah. Also a quick announcement. We now have a new coloring book. Uh, it is Exploring the Wildlife by the Canals and Rivers. This coloring book is more focused on sort of the wildlife, um, but the first one um, had more sort of boats, locks, water points and everything like that. Uh, this one focuses more on the nature of the canals. Um, I'll insert a proper picture of what they look like. Um, I'll put the link in the description for you to go and check them out. The pages are really fun to colour, um, and the pictures are also really well drawn, so they kind of look like the herons, the swans, and everything like that. Um, but yeah. So I just want to say a big thank you to my three new patrons. I want to say a big thank you to Mark, James, and Helen for donating to my Patreon. It means the world to me, and I'm really glad you enjoy my videos. So hope you this video, if you did, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I do a video, and come on to my social medias, my Patreon, and my Gmail, thenabrogirl at gmail.com if you have any suggestions for me, and you also do have a stress if you like to me letters, um, but yeah, see you later, bye!